Hello and welcome to our fourth official CPP community cast. My name is Andrea Andy Handy and I am a learning and development consultant with Cal Poly Pomona. And my name is Brian Taylor and I'm a talent advisor in talent acquisition and diversity outreach. And my name is Jesus Avalos and I too am a learning and development consultant with strategic learning and organizational excellence initiatives. Hi everyone, my name is Miguel Rute and I'm a multimedia analyst for EODA. Perfect, all right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. How are we all doing? Great. I'm good. It's a, yeah. it's a beautiful Thursday. I know, it is. I know. And I have been drinking tons of water. That is my one of my New Year's resolutions, so. All right, everybody. I'm sure people listening are saying, yeah, you just reminded them that they need to go drink water. Jesus. Yeah, it's what is it? What is it like the daily recommendation? It's like seven gallons of water we should be drinking a day. Is that what it is? Something like that? Seven gallons. We were trying to figure it out yesterday because I only had like 80 ounces yesterday. Yeah, I'm telling Not you, good. it's like some some crazy amount. So oh my goodness. I'm getting my first cup. Well, awesome. Thanks so much. For those of you who are listening or watching for the first time, um, well, I want to introduce our question of the day. So um, each episode, we do a question of the day just to allow us to get to know each other a little bit better, share ideas, and be present in the moment. And so, Brian, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you. Well, Jesus, you're, you're, um, you're drinking water and your New Year's resolution is a little bit of a transition into my question. So um, I know that we've all been in a transition period for a while now. Um, I recently moved into a new place, and so it's been an even bigger transition for me. Uh, and so I noticed that when, I guess, when there's points of transition, it's really hard to, you know, keep, make good habits and keep those good habits. So my question today is, what are some tips or tools um, that help you guys maintain good habits in your work and daily life? Ooh, I, I actually have one. It's on my phone. So this is a shameless plug and you don't have to use this app, but there is an app that I have that helps me with habits and it allows you to track your habits. And of course, appropriately enough, it's called Habit Master. So I can't recommend, I, I don't know if you pay for it, but it's free. I don't know, but if you pay for it, it's gotta be like 99 cents. And again, I'm sure there are tons of different ones but this one has a checklist. You create a checklist for every day. And I don't know if you can see mine. No, you can't. But anyways, it's got all of the different things that I do during the day. And every day you check it off, it'll keep track of your streak. So it'll show your current streak and your longest streak. So it's really nice. And then you can set it for days that you might want to skip your habit for the week. So for example, we have two dogs and at the risk of being slightly off color, I do pick up their doggy poo every day, but my wife does it on the weekends. So I get to actually take that off on the weekends. So you can set that up and have it master. So that is my shameless plug and I don't get any money for that. So I just wanted to share. <laughs> you are speaking my language, Jesus. I love lists. Literally yeah. every day I make a list because they make, it makes me feel more accomplished because I can, when I cross them off. Yeah. So that's yeah. my, I definitely feel the same way. I feel like when I have a list, um, there's actually a, an app called through Microsoft called Microsoft to do. And it's, it sounds pretty similar to yours where you can just check it off. Um, and I really love it because um, when you check it off, it makes a cool sound. So I feel like I really accomplished that task. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it dinged again. Like that's, it's a, it's like a reward system. It kind of feels like, yeah. You know. And so Brian, could you just say your question one more time? Oh yeah, definitely. So my question is, uh, what are some tips or tools that help you maintain good habits at work or in your daily life? Okay, perfect. All right, Miguel, it's all you. Okay, uh, for me, I'm more like traditional. I'm using sticky notes still. Um, I can write down the notes and I have like a whiteboard next to me uh, since I'm working at home. And so every time I kind of like the satisfied feeling of crushing it like after you finish with the task. So it's like, I kind of like that... Uh, Kind of like, kind of like how you guys have to take off, but um, but crushing the, the the sticky note has that feeling of you know accomplishment. So that's what I've been doing. And then do you have a basketball hoop that you throw it in after? Yeah, I do have a bin right in the box. <laughs> like, try to aim it and toss it like I'm playing basketball or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
pretty far away. So what you should do, Miguel, is you should keep track of how many of those shots you make and then make a sticky note every time you actually make a shot and then crush those sticky notes and then try and shoot those. <laughs> So, so Miguel is basically busy for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> He's making and crushing stickies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love that idea of stickies. The visceral, that, I think that's what gets to me, whether it be checking something off or crushing it. I just There's something about that process that is really rewarding. Same thing with my little app is I just check it off, but it's still that feeling of satisfaction of accomplishment. That I love it. it. I would say for me, so I... I gone through a lot of transition this last year and a half. I mean, a lot in my life. My life looks totally different than it did even just a year ago. And um, and going through some of the the sessions that we've we've taught and going through just staff enrichment and um, continuing to talk a lot about self-care and self-awareness. And so one of, I would say my tip is spend time when you make those checklists, my tip would make sure to put something that you're gonna do for yourself and something that you mm -hmm. enjoy. Um, I, I keep telling people, and this has been coming up a lot as, as a theme in my life, but someone else's, someone else's emergency or urgency is not your own emergency or urgency. And so don't, you don't need to necessarily take that on, even though sometimes you feel like you have to do so. And so <clears throat> making sure to do those self-care um, practices every day, whether that's taking a walk or taking a bath or reading a book or just sitting and even watching television. I mean, really it's whatever you enjoy. And so that, that would be my best practice or tip. So that's a typically on my list of to do things. Yeah, I love that idea. I think we're oftentimes so much better at honoring commitments that we make to other people than we are at honoring commitments that we make to ourselves or doing for others rather than doing for ourselves or extending grace to others and being hard on ourselves. So I love that idea of taking care of yourself and just doing something that you love to do. Yeah. I agree. I, oftentimes when we take time for ourselves, I feel like, and I know I have, and, and that sometimes I feel a little selfish, like, oh man, there's so many things and so many people need my help. So do I really have the time to really go outside and meditate for 30 minutes? And the answer is yes, you do, because then you can be more present and helpful to the people that you'd like to support. And so I, I, I'm still practicing it, but I am enjoying it very much. Yeah. And it's funny because Miguel and I were talking, I think it was last week, Miguel, we were talking about saying no and saying not now and the value of sometimes, like you said, somebody else's emergency doesn't have to be your emergency. And so sometimes you have to be willing to say, I'd love to do that, or I'd love to help you with that. And I can help you with that, but I can't help you with that right now. I can help you with that at this time. Exactly. Or even sometimes saying no can be important so you can say yes to yourself. I, I, one of my wins last week was I said no to somebody and I, and I got so like, oh, I feel like I'm being mean. And, um, and, and a friend of mine was like, I'm so proud of you. So it just felt, it felt good and awkward at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what's your tip or best practice? You know, I, I really love your tip. Um, I think it's something that I've been working on. Like I have my to-do list for work, um, but then having a to-do list for things that I want to do. Um, I feel like sometimes, you know, I make my to-do list for work. I check off everything that I need to. And then I have all these ideas of what I want to do after work. And sometimes I never get to them. Mm -hmm. And so just making that list for my own personal work and working on myself and working on things that you know, I enjoy. Um, it still can be viewed as work, but I think, um, you know, making that list really kind of holds you accountable. So um, I, like I said, I recently moved and I've been trying to go to the gym every day. And so um, I actually worked it into my morning schedule because I realized that um, after work, I don't really like going to the gym. So it's just kind of understanding what, what um, I guess what I want out of that experience and making sure that I'm putting in the work for myself um, you know, before I even get to work. So I go to the gym at 6.15 and then I start my day with, uh, you know, my career and working. And so I, I feel like putting myself first really helps me start the day on a better foot. Um, you know, I eat breakfast. I, I create all those habits that I need to, you know, I've, I've already showered before I started work. So it's, it, it, really, it really helps to build, um, build that foundation that I want to, you know, stand on by kind of viewing what I want as work and working towards a goal. I'm not just, 
you know, meditating, I'm working on my mental health. So, you know, I think sometimes people have this view that work is just what you do from eight to five or what you get paid for. But I think I'm always working. I'm always trying to work on myself and, and work to grow. So I think that's, that's my tip. I love that. I feel like we could have a, an entire conversation just about that. <laughs> True. Because it's such a cool topic. And, um, and you mentioned habits and, and we just finished a, a session for seven habits of highly effective people. And we talk about um, your daily private victories. And, and I'm so glad that I was able to facilitate the session because every day I'm like, what is my daily private victory? Am I too tired to get up and do this? And so when I do get up and, and I'm not feeling well or, or I am a little bit tired and I, I do it, I feel so much more accomplished because I didn't let it go by. And so that was really cool. Well, awesome. That was a great question, Brian. Look at us yeah. getting all deep early in the morning. Before yeah, I told you, I told you it was going to be deep. <laughs> well done. My head hurts already. <laughs> so glad I have my coffee here. I already have my celery juice. So at least I was a little prepared. So let's, um, let's share some cool campus happenings. I know we have some updates for everyone. And I was chatting with Jody and Megan from Benefits. They have some really cool um, monthly activities that are either celebrating or spreading awareness on different topics. So um, if you are part of the, the CPP community and you receive those emails, please check them out. They're going to be raising awareness um, on mental health and specifically supporting minorities. So sometimes um, just getting access to healthcare can be challenging, um, especially in regards to mental health. And we may not all have the same access to resources. And so uh, if you'd like to get um, some support or identify some resources for you on July 14th. They're going to be having a session. Um, and then on July 20th, the benefit team is going to be doing a live information session. So I have been here for over a year already and I often have questions because to be honest, I just don't remember. And so I'll hop on to one of their sessions. They're so helpful. I'm um, getting information to you. So the easiest way to get that information is on the CPP EODA benefits site. And if we can, we'll put a link on there for you. Um, but these sessions are gonna be taking place monthly. And if you haven't had an opportunity to hop on, please do so. Um, they're very informative and they're a lot of fun. And so Brian, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you. Well, thank you, Andy. I just have one update to share regarding our PageUp training. Um, so PageUp is a system that we're rolling out to the campus. Um, it's really going to support us with our recruiting efforts, um, and it's really going to support us um, helping with managers. Um, so I really think um, there, there's a few things that I wanted to share. Recently, we just had our, our training session that finished with the division admins. So there was a number of different people involved with that. Um, so Diana Saldana, um, Diane Gonzalez, Francine Ramirez, Amanda Elias, Sonia Sanders, Carolyn Irwin, Lori Bunner, Caitlin Sedsmack, and Leah Espinoza. And if I miss anybody, I do apologize. Um, but they were really able to give us a lot of great knowledge and insight that we needed, um, essentially to help build out our system and roll it out to the campus. Um, so I think by the end of summer, or hopefully by the end of this year, it is something that we will be rolling out. Um, it will be assisting with our recruiting efforts, but will also make a lot easy for managers to actually recruit. Um, so everything is gonna be housed in one area. Um, applicants will be able to apply and there'll be a seamless workflow from beginning to end. So I just wanted to thank them for all of their insight, um, you know, helping us with build out and roll this out to the campus. Um, so I think that's all I had, Andy. That's cool, Brian. And um, this is, I know this is gonna, provide a lot of support for um, for anyone in recruitment and, and having those career opportunities. But it sounds like we're going to have quite a bit of opportunities available coming up. Yeah. So recently, actually, as of yesterday, I posted three new jobs. I think I have about 15 currently, you know, within the past two months, I think I filled over, uh, about 10 to 12 positions. So we definitely have a lot, a lot more coming down. Um, I'm not the only one on my team. I'm a team of three. And so we all have, you know, a heavy workload that we're working with, um, but it, it is exciting. I'm happy to kind of get back to that and move away from the hiring chill. Um, you know, so it's, it's definitely exciting for me and my team. Yeah, you guys are superstars for sure. And uh, for those of you listening or watching, of course, if, if you are interested in any opportunities that are available, um, check out the, um, the career employment opportunities because um, they're updating all the time, as Brian said, and with all of the changes, 
coming up. There may be some new opportunities that we haven't seen before. So thanks so much, Brian. That is awesome. All right. So now I want to bring back Miguel, who is going to be interviewing our special guest for today, who is the executive director of the Arabian Horse Center, John Lambert. Welcome, John. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome. So you may notice uh, if you're watching our podcast right now that um, Brian is no longer on the screen. He is actually at the Arabian Horse Center helping to record so that we can kind of bring the entire Horse Center to life um, and be able to see everything that's going on. So thanks, Brian, for doing that. And thank you, John, for joining us today. Of course, of course. I'm going to try and move one of our guests, our surprise guest over <laughs> here uh, before we get started. So who, who I have here, this is C.P. Daniela. And uh, CP Daniela has um, her filly, who now is about almost four weeks old, at her side here. And a, a quick little story. Uh, well, first of all, none of the foals have names yet. So that I'm sure there's going to be a question coming up in a little bit, but none of them officially are named. Um, but this beautiful young filly right here is about four weeks old. She is the first one of her daddy in the world. Uh, so her stallion's name is Rhythmic. He is an imported stallion from Australia. It's super exciting. I was able to get a donated breeding last year and she is the first fall of this uh, very young stallion in the world right now. Um, so it's a great story. Um, Mr. Kellogg started this program back in 1925 and he went over to England to Lady Wentworth's and he was able to uh, uh, somehow do some smooth talking with Lady Wentworth and imported uh, several of her best crabbit horses. I won't go into the crabbit line of the Arabian breed but there's a lot of history there and so why this filly is so important is we're coming back full circle. Crabbit breeding hasn't been taking place for many, 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 many years. When I say many years, uh, 25, 30 years. So there's a stallion now that is out there. He's 90% crap, 97%. And this is our filly wow. out of a Cal Poly bred mare. So we're going full circle all the way back to Mr. Kellogg right here, right in front of you guys. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and they're beautiful. Yeah, she she is she's exceeded all of our expectations. Um, and the, the last one is there may be some questions about this filly. She's got a um, her neck was shaved right here. Um, she was born two and a half, almost three weeks early. So we just took some uh, precautions with her and made sure that she was healthy. So that that's why you see her her neck shaved. But she's one hundred percent healthy and doing great. So with that said, now we'll, we'll start the podcast. Yeah, uh, we could continue on from here. Um, so John, can you tell us more about the vision of Kellogg? Kellogg's vision? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mr. Kellogg's vision, uh, again, 1925, he bought this land, 377 acres was what it started out with. Here, what is now known to be Cal Poly Pomona. That, that space has grown since then, but the original acreage was... Uh, 377 acres. Wow. He, uh, Mr. Kellogg is the, and his brother started Kellogg cereals. Most of us know that. And they were in Battle Creek, Michigan. He came out to Pomona, California in the early 1920s when it was out in the middle of nowhere uh, to, to go back to his childhood dream. Mr. Kellogg always loved horses and never was able to have a horse when he was a child. So now he was financially stable. He wanted to start a breeding program of Arabian horses right here in Pomona, California. He bought a few from a gentleman that was a breeder in uh, Diamond Bar. And then very shortly after that, within six months, he made his journey out to England where he bought 20 plus crabbit bred horses from Lady Wentworth. Wow. imported those back to the United States. As you can imagine, that was a, that was a big deal back then. Boats, trains, they didn't have horse trailers. They didn't have other means of transportation. The horses eventually made it back here. Within two years, uh, he, he built the facilities that 
uh, now house a lot of the classrooms, the old stables on campus. And right off the back, uh, Mr. Kellogg started promoting his breeding program and the Arabian horses to the public. So he would go and get people all the way down in LA. They didn't have many roads back then. And they would drive up here, sometimes by the thousands. And he would do these uh, presentations called Sunday shows. And what they were, were an exhibit of these beautiful animals. You know, Arabian horses are, are, are really the most versatile breed of all of the breeds. And it goes back to saying that the Arabian likely is the original horse as well. But Mr. Kellogg wanted to promote the Arabian breed through the Sunday shows. So as the story goes, he promotes the horses. He starts a world-renowned breeding program right here where we're standing or where the, the, the student, uh, not classrooms, but offices, um, the old stables, and continues the breeding program. In the 1940s, he donated the land to the state of California, and Mr. Kellogg's wish was a couple of things in the deed, that we continue to do certain things with the breeding program, and that's what we see right here, um, raising high quality, great examples of the Arabian horse. The other one is education, using the horses through learning opportunities and to build a university. Uh, so that was in the 1940s. So today we still do our Sunday shows. We do a lot of educational opportunities here at the Horse Center with labs and classes. We have an equine minor. So we're continuing almost 100 years later with Mr. Kellogg's wishes and vision. It's the oldest continuous Arabian breeding program in the United States. Very cool. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the questions was, I know you mentioned about the Sunday Horse Show. Um, how can people enjoy the, the, um, the Horse Center? I know um, people, um, what can people do like for either their, their staff, faculty, or you know, students? I know you mentioned there was a program on but um, if you could explain us more about like what we what people can do. Absolutely. So how, that's a great question and, and one that I want to share with everybody. Um, how do you get involved with the Arabian horses here at the uh, Horse Center? There's a lot of different ways. And, and I'm going to talk uh, in the context of pre-pandemic mm -hmm. and then once the university uh, opens up and public is allowed back, students, staff, faculty. Uh, currently, today, just know that the Horse Center is closed to the public. We, are, we continue to only be open for essential operations, and that is to take care of the horses. We do have a few student labs going on here, uh, but those are highly vetted. But for the most part, we are closed and the gates continue to be to be closed until um, till it's deemed that it's, it's appropriate to open the horse center back up. But that time will come and when it does, how does everyone get down here? Well, they just walk down to the Arabian Horse Center uh, to, the, to the main building, the flag is out front, the water fountain is out front and that's where the main offices are. You'll come and you'll check in and then it's open to everybody. You can do free self-guided tours here. You can walk around the entire property uh, at the Arabian Horse Center. Ask questions. We have staff here. They love to answer questions. You can stand by the fence on the other side, not where I'm at, and take a picture with one of the horses. Yeah, you can reach out and, and pet one. Um, a staff member can help you if you guys need help. Um, student opportunities. We've recently rekindled a equine minor in the College of Ag. Uh, so those are some other learning opportunities. The College of uh, Animal Veterinary Science uh, uses our horses in labs. So uh, those students that are here at the university getting a four-year four degree in veterinary technology, they come down here and they learn and they get hands-on experience with the horses. We have um, an amazing class called Bull Watch. This year we did it virtually and online. It was our first time. Uh, but uh, previously we've had upwards of over 100 students involved in Bull Watch. 
and students get assigned a pregnant mare. They learn how to monitor the mare. They come down at scheduled times throughout the week. And then they're involved and they're here when the mayor has their baby. So they actually get to see that. Those students also are involved in the possibilities of, of naming our beautiful little filly right here. Uh, how else can you get involved? Um, yet the, the opportunities are endless. The, the, the biggest thing that I want everyone to know is that the Horse Center is a welcome place. We want everyone to come down here. Um, it's, a, it's a great sanctuary. For me, it's my job and, and it's my passion and I love the horses, but it still is a job sometimes. But for others, it's a place to just get away. And you can come down here on your lunch break and just walk through the horse pastures, not in the horse pastures, but, but around the horse pastures. And, and look at the horses and just uh, enjoy them. They're very calm. So that, that's one message that I'd like to get out to everyone, faculty, staff, students. This is a place to just come and walk around. It's 30 plus acres of land. You can get a lot of exercise out here while you're uh, viewing and looking at the horses. Twice a day, I walk the entire property. I can get 10,000 steps in just checking on all of our horses twice a day. Very cool. I, I say we that. take a, a community cast uh, field trip once we're able to. I think we should yeah. all take that. Yeah, I love that point that you made, John, because I know a lot of us, and I'm including myself in that group, certainly, are looking to get a little more exercise, especially after everything that we've been dealing with over the past year and a lot of the isolation and being home a lot. And as you mentioned, whenever that time comes that the horse center is able to fully open again, what a great opportunity to go outside, get some exercise, walk into the horse center, walk around a little bit and get to experience the, the, the beautiful horses. And they're really curious and they're really friendly. I, list, I just love being there. And with all the stress that we can have during the day, it's a great way, like you said, to center yourself, get a little exercise, get some fresh air, and then get back to your workspace refreshed and ready to take on the next challenges. So I love that suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, horses are big and they can be intimidating. Um, and, and we have people here to, to help tell the story, also tell you a little more about Arabian horses, but you can see how, how wonderful they are. Um, they are my life, uh, but, but they are the cornerstone of, of the university. And that's what Kel Mr. Kellogg's uh, wishes were originally. The last question I wanted to ask, are there any student success stories? I know you mentioned the, you know, students being part of the program. Um, do you have any mentions of, of any? Oh, you know, your questions are so good. And, and I could, we could do 20 versions of this uh, <laughs> podcast or maybe a series of 20. I would love to do that. Because uh, I, I get so excited when we talk about the horse center and the horses. Uh, so student success stories, there are so many. Uh, and and uh, when I say many, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of student success stories. So I'm going to pick out two. Uh, the first one is going to be um, our trainer here at the Arabian Horse Center. Her name is Maddie Ogburn. Maddie Ogburn is a recent graduate of Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, I believe 2019 is when, when Maddie graduated. So two years ago, she graduated. Um, I, at the time, I was the horse trainer here. And Maddie started out as one of those visitors. She was a volunteer her freshman year. Maddie showed up every day to the horse center and she was watching me train horses every day she was here so pretty soon i noticed that and created a dialogue with maddie and and soon uh she got an opportunity uh to work here at the horse center she she got employed as a groom and she learned how to tack and take care of the horses and and then that naturally progressed to i let her start learning how to work with the horses she already had experience with horses but not training young horses so pretty soon she was exercising the horses. And then by her third year, she actually got on some of the horses for their very first rides. Um, 
Maddie graduates, um, and here I am as the executive director. We put out a search for a new horse trainer, um, and Maddie applied for it. And uh, there were quite a few candidates from around the country. And Maddie was the one selected as our horse trainer. She's been here now for about a year and a half as an alumni of Cal Poly, started out as a volunteer at the Horse Center. Now she's gonna be highly involved in our President's Arabian Advisory Committee next week uh, for the Horse Center. So she's a great success story of how someone can, can just start as a visitor and, and move on. Now, not everyone's gonna maybe be a horse trainer here, but it's a great story of opportunity. Uh, and so she's a great example. Another student success stories was uh, prior to the pandemic, we had a, a pilot project program called Horses for Heroes. Maybe you guys know about that already. Uh, we had 10 students that were veterans from the military here on campus and they were uh, from the Veterans Resource Center. They too got assigned horses and they came down five days a week. They didn't have any experience with horses. And the goal was to use the horses as an opportunity to help these veterans uh, reintegrate into society, but also campus life. Because they had been off into the military and, and now they're coming into campus life. And so we didn't know how it was gonna go. We had an idea, uh, but we did some amazing things with these veterans. They each got assigned a horse. They learned how to properly handle their horse, lead their horse, groom their horse. Then they learned how to take their horse through obstacles to set up what is called a trail course. Um, and then at the very end of the program, they had like a, a little mini show and their family got to come and watch them uh, present their horses. We had news stations here. It was really amazing. But getting to talk to the veterans afterwards at how much it affected them, how great of an opportunity it was for them, how relaxing it was for them, uh, and how it really, really was a useful tool to help them integrate back into campus life. So those are, those are two, two great student success stories that have just happened recently. Wow, John, those stories, your, your stories are powerful and, and we really do appreciate you sharing your experience and your passion with us because it's very clear that the horses love you. Um, and I love how you just stand there knocking you all over the place and it doesn't phase you whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been highly involved with the Arabians my whole life, a little bit about me. Um, I was a professional trainer, uh, ran my own business uh, for 18 years. I, I hold uh, a large R Arabian judges card. I've judged uh, the U.S. National Championships, the Canadian National Championships. I've judged the Scottsdale Arabian Horse Show in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, it is the largest horse show in the world. Um, I've served on their board for uh, seven, eight years. Um, traveled the globe judging shows. Uh, so I'm comfortable around them because this is what I do. It's like you guys are maybe a little more comfortable on Zoom than I am. That's why yeah. I couldn't get it going this morning. <laughs> this, this is my comfort zone. When they uh, are really I love the horses and I love to share everything about them. Thank you. And, and you can see that they're comfortable with you as well. So we do appreciate it, but the fun isn't over yet. Uh, I'll go ahead and give it to Jesus who's going to continue on some fun activities for us. All right, John. And... Uh, we should actually say that that it, it's actually we have a couple of guests, right? So it's you and CP Daniela and 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 her little baby. So we're gonna have to modify the the title of this episode because CP Daniela was definitely a great co-host with you. So please relay our thanks to her before we move on. Absolutely. But, but next thing we want to talk about though is your tip, trick, or hack. And so this is based on the idea that everybody is multifaceted. So you not only know about horses, you over the course of your life have accumulated other pieces of knowledge and information and tips and tricks and 
hacks with your little shortcuts to make life easier. So what would you share if somebody asked you, what is just a, some random tip or trick or hack? What's something that you have that you could share with our audience that might make their life a little easier, help them out? Yeah. So I knew somewhere someone was going to try and trip me up here. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm always thinking of horses. I, my, I wake up, go to bed thinking about horses. That's my life. Um, so a lot of people can't relate to that, but I am a trick or a half in life experience. I'm going to relate this to horses a little bit. All right. And hopefully, hopefully you guys will, will capture this one. So Chrome, we all know what Chrome is, right? A Chrome bumper. Yep. A, a lot of cars have Chrome bumpers. Nowadays, a lot of them are plastic or a bicycle that has Chrome wheels. Yeah. And that's where I'm getting at. Uh, so with our horses, we also, some of them, we train them to pull a buggy and they have the wheels are Chrome. Well, sometimes they get wet. It's like your bumper on your vehicle might get wet or the rims on your car if you have Chrome rims and they'll get pitted yes. with rust. We've all seen those little pits of rust on Chrome uh -huh. outside somewhere. So how do we get rid of that, the pitting on the Chrome without ruining it or taking it into the shop and have it dipped in new Chrome and that costs thousands of dollars. The trick is, I had this happen to me with a buggy. I had a very nice expensive buggy and had to go to a horse show and I unwrapped it and the, the rims had all this rusted pit on them. So I had to figure out a way to do that without spending thousands of dollars. So you take Coca-Cola, you dump Coca-Cola on the Chrome, real Coca-Cola, not diet Coca-Cola, by the way, and no flavored Coca-Cola, just use plain old Coca-Cola. And then aluminum foil that you, you know, you use in your, in your drawer in your kitchen. Tear off a piece of aluminum foil, pour the Coca-Cola and start rubbing vigorously. The Coca-Cola eats away at the rust and the aluminum foil buffs, buffs it and polishes it and you could never tell it was ever there. Now you no. have a per perfect chrome bumper again on your car that is 20 years old. What? <laughs> And I'll tell you why I'm so excited. Random, random. So, A, I do have chrome rims. One. Yeah. Two, I'm a drummer, and a lot of my hardware is chrome, and it gets pitted. I have drums that have that, and I've never heard that before. So, officially, yeah. my mind is blown. <laughs> yeah. It will work for you, I promise. I promise. <laughs> Try it on your drums. I don't know what it'll do to the material, but... Uh, it will get that, it'll get that off. Just use a fine little, not steel wool, but use aluminum foil and it, it works perfect. You, you truly are a Renaissance man, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like that one. But you're not off the hook yet. Okay. The last, the last segment of our, of our discussion is what we call lightning round questions. So I invite all of you that are watching to answer the questions on your own as well. But this is a deal. It's going to be fast fire, John. I'm just going to fire them away at you and you just answer whatever pops into your head. Okay. So you got okay. 50 for you and they're going to come fast and furious. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First question. What is something you don't know how to do, but wish you did? Skydive. Ooh. All right. What is your favorite city in the U S besides the one you live in? Scottsdale, Arizona. All right. Who is your favorite celebrity or historical figure? Mr. Kellogg. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be? To read everybody's mind. Ooh, okay. What is the best advice you've ever received? Uh, one day at a time. Mm, okay. What is your favorite scent or smell? Strawberries. Oh, all right. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? 1950s. Mm, all right. What is your favorite holiday? Halloween. Uh-huh. Scale of one to 10, how good of a driver are you? A 10. <laughs> all right. What was your last Halloween costume? My last Halloween costume. Uh, uh, I was myself last time. 
Oh, that doesn't <laughs> count, John. Uh, military I'm just officer. That. Military officer with my All son. All right, good. What's for dinner tonight? Wow, I'll have to call my wife. <laughs> oh, all right. So that's a surprise. That's, that's pending. We'll, 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 we'll answer that in the next time. Uh, how many hours of sleep do you need? I need eight hours. All right. What's your favorite carb? Bread, pasta, rice, or potatoes? Well, I love every one of those. Uh, that would be a tie, but I'll pick uh, baked potatoes. All right. What's your favorite car or truck? My favorite truck would be my F-350 sitting right over there. Uh, and I've seen it before. She's a beauty. All right, John, the last question for you. Pacino or De Niro? De Niro. Oh, I didn't hesitate at all. Well done, John. You ran the gauntlet. So. Uh, I don't know how great I did, but thank you, guys. <laughs> Well, thank you, John. Thanks so much for being here today. It was so great learning more about the Arabian Horse Center and about you and just all the history. And we really do appreciate it. I think this is going to be um, a very uh, well-watched episode. So I'm excited for all of our viewers and listeners to be able to, to see this. And, and thank you, Brian, for being the man behind the camera. Back there. Yeah, of course, my arms are getting tired here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody. And we'll well, until next together. time, in the words of loyal Jack Lumen, never stop learning, for when we stop learning, we stop growing. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and we hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, see you then. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, everybody, we're ready to roll. Okay. All right, I'm going to one last break. Okay, now I'm ready. All right. Oh, it'll just be, you'll just have to make sure that, that you're, what is it? You're muted, right? Is that oh, right? look at us. <laughs> There's a little bit of a lag. It's like a two second lag. Yeah. You know what, Brian? There's a proper etiquette to kicking people out of your home. Normally you'll say something like, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And then you kick us out. Yeah. I was all excited. Look at us. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I didn't you owe realize. me money or something like that? Are you trying to avoid me or something? I'm sorry. <laughs> One second. I hope those are in the bloopers. Yeah, absolutely. And right? This can be fun. Everybody turn your head. I know. <laughs> Look. John's on his side. John, hold on to something. <laughs> See, now John totally messes up. Now John's upside down. Okay. This is uh Don't do it, John. <laughs> <laughs>